Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Joe Bacella here at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to our presentation of how to time winning trades uh, using the experts checklist for stocks and options. Presenting today is Mark Chaken, founder and CEO of Chaken Analytics. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to everyone who has registered. Please submit your questions throughout the presentation using the Zoom Q&A window, which is available in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. Now, before we get started, we have a special guest with us today, the founder of BigTrends.com, Price Heedley. Price founded BigTrends.com to provide investors with specific real-time stock and options strategies, as well as, as, an, as well as an investment education to profit from significant market trends. So to get us started, here's Price Heedley. Oh, well, thank you, Joe, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's always a pleasure to be able to uh, uh, introduce Mark Chaikin and also to learn from Mark Chaikin. I always pick up something new every time I listen to Mark and, and really get educated by him. You know, I've been trading for more than 25 years. Mark more than doubles me, having started in the business uh, of investments back in 1965, more than 50 years ago. Uh, he's the founder, of course, of a number of uh, proprietary stock market indicators. And uh, I think you'll find his uh, power gauge and numerous other uh, check and analytics tools incredibly interesting and valuable today. So I don't want to take up any more of his valuable time. I want to say welcome, Mark and it's always a pleasure to learn from you. Price, thank you very much and welcome everybody. Uh, today's webinar is to focus on timing winning trades and it's really my checklist for trading stocks and options. Uh, my background as Price said and includes over 50 years on Wall Street. For 45 years, I've been combining fundamental analysis with technical analysis. Along the way, I headed the options department at a really good regional brokerage firm, Tucker Anthony and RL Day. We had over 250 brokers, tens of thousands of options accounts. And I'm going to share um, an observation from that experience that I think will be very useful for everybody. Um, I've been mentored by colleagues and clients, and these were some of the smartest institutional investors on Wall Street. Some of them were hedge funds, some were value investors, and everything I learned from them I put into the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. This is our fundamental indicator. That's the culmination of my life's work. We're going to share with you three indicators, one fundamental, the Power Gauge, two technical, uh, which combine with good entry and exit signals are all you need to effectively use options to trade or to swing trade with individual stocks. So in the next 40 minutes, you're going to discover five keys to profitable options and swing trading. And we're going to end with um, what you're going to do in earnings season. And earnings season is coming up in October. Uh, we've been very successful over the last five years uh, guiding our clients to take advantage of volatility and opportunities during earnings season. And as we approach October, uh, this is going to be very, very profitable and important to learn what to look for during earnings season. So I'd like to start out with a question. Are you thinking about a bear market? And if you're watching CNBC, you know that this has been top of mind. Joe, do we have a poll today or are we going to uh, pass over that one? We're going to rely on the Q&A window uh, for this one. All right. So uh, let us know if a bear market or a big correction is on your mind. And Joe, let me know what people are thinking, please. Well, the very first response here was a capital Y-E-S. Uh, y -E um, so I'm seeing a few yeses, but a couple more. It, it seems to be two yeses for every one no. Well, that's uh, not atypical. A lot of people on CNBC have been very cautious. We've been cautious on the market, certainly not looking for a bear market. Why have we been cautious? Because there's a seasonal pattern that says uh, September, October, weakest period for the market. There's also a, a little more arcane pattern that says in years ending in seven, uh, you typically get big corrections. The problem with that, everybody you read about this everywhere. They were talking about it on CNBC. So the edge that I had, that Price Eadley had, because we knew, we've known about this pattern for uh, 20 years, uh, went away uh, to an extent, although we haven't broken out on the upside yet. So uh, 
being cautious wasn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, the problem is when everybody knows something, uh, it doesn't work as well. And that's why we're going to teach you something really proprietary in today's webinar about our old shake and money flow and also about earnings season. So let's start out by looking at the market. Here's a one year chart of the SPY. This is the um, S&P 500 ETF. It's the most actively traded ETF in the marketplace. And we've been in a pretty defined uptrend. Now we made a very high volume uh, mini double bottom back in August. And personally, I thought we'd come back and test that low. We didn't. So uh, we've got to readjust. And as the market uh, started moving back up through resistance at uh, 2450, uh, we started seeing opportunities again. And you'll see the signals that get you into these trades, whether you have a market opinion or not. And that's another way to deal with uh, you know, a market opinion. Follow a discipline. If the discipline tells you to do something, don't let your opinion get in the way of it. But as you can see, Taking money flow, which had been strong all through 2017, leading up to that little pullback in August, has now gotten strong yet again. So uh, I think the market is in pretty good shape, looking for a little bit of a pullback in individual stock market. I don't think we're going to get anything to 2 to 3%, but let's take a look. So why are you? Bearish. You, if you look for a bear market, there's really only one thing that accurately predicts bear markets, and that's a recession in stock, in, in the economy. And so far, the three indicators I look at that have been accurate in predicting going back a little, aren't even close to triggering. The first one is the yield curve. And if the yield curve inverts, meaning that short-term rates move above long-term rates, that's been an accurate descriptor, but that's not happening. And then there are two fundamental indicators. 12-month moving average of housing starts. Every recession since 1960, 12-month moving average of housing dropped. Now, we've had three bad months of housing numbers, but the 12-month moving average is still moving up. And as that indicator, there's accurately predicted recessions, therefore bear markets. The ratio of leading indicators to coincident indicators and that making new highs. But one of the reasons that's making new highs is because one of let's put pullbacks in perspective. Let's take bear markets off the table and talk about pullbacks. So since 1970, in 1945, there have been 75 declines of 5 to 10%. They're really your friend. They typically average 6% last a month, but you recover to new highs within a month. We haven't had a 5% decline since June of 2016, Brexit. So everybody's looking for one. It's overdue, but it's not happening. We haven't even had a 3% decline uh, in the last 12 months. So very difficult to make money if you're on the sidelines looking for a decline. And then when we look here at the bottom of this chart, 11 bear markets in 72 years. So one every six years. So if you're constantly looking for a bear market, you're missing out on opportunities. So I'm calling this a yogi bear market. It ain't over till it's over. What's important to know is some sense of market direction, and we think that's up. What's the trend of corporate earnings? Clearly higher. Third quarter earnings will be reported in October. Second quarter earnings were fabulous. Analysts are very optimistic about third and fourth quarter earnings. And the trend of interest rates. Now, interest rates uh, pulled back from February till about 10 days ago, and now they're moving back up again. I'd love to see rising interest rates. Why? Because they're bullish for small cap stocks, and they're bullish for financial stocks. And those are the stocks that have positive ratings in our fundamental model. And then of absolute importance is to know which sectors are strong and which industry groups are strong. And then conversely, which ones are weak because you want to stay focused on the strong industry groups on your long trades and the weak industry groups for your short trades. But in case you don't feel the way I do, if you want to hedge an October decline, here's the perfect way to do it. We've embedded an options idea module called options play that we've licensed in Chaken Analytics. 
And using options play in about five seconds, I came up with the ideal strategy for hedging an October decline. This strategy earns over 350% return if the market drops a little less than 3% from this 2,500 level on the SP500 or the 250 level on the Spider down to 243. So you buy the slightly in the money November put that expires on November 3rd. That's the 250 put. And against that, you sell the 243 put. Why do you put on this bearish vertical put spread? Because it reduces your cost. If you buy the put, outright costs you $252. If you put on the spread, it only costs you $140. And this gets a big 199 rating. It doesn't get any more favorable. Risk reward is really favorable if you're bearish. Now, the other thing you can do with this is, is if you have a 401k plan or you're trading a long portfolio in addition to options, you can hedge $25,000 worth of your portfolio against a 3% decline in the market for $140. You can hedge $250,000 for $1,400 and then let the portfolio breathe. And if you're wrong and the market doesn't decline for a very inexpensive insurance policy, you've hedged your portfolio. But if you're trading from a speculative point of view and you're bearish, this is one of the most fabulous risk reward ratios I've ever seen. Part of the reason is volatility is so low. So if you're here on CNBC, the volatility is low and that's bearish for the market, put it to your advantage. This is a put spread that can easily bring in a huge return if the market drops 3% in the next six weeks. I don't think uh, that's out of the question, but I don't see the indication. We had a mini pullback today based on what Janet Yellen and the Fed were talking about yesterday. They're going to start unwinding their balance sheet and maybe one more interest rate hike. As I said, this is really bullish for financials and for small caps. Love to see this happen. And if it does happen and the market drops, here's your protection. But a lot of information to process to trade and make money. And in polls that we've done on webinars and in talking to clients, information overload is their biggest problem. How do you process all this information? You're an options trader, you're involved with the Greeks. One of the solutions is to subscribe to a service from someone like Price Headley, who's got a great track record because he does some of the heavy lifting for you. If you're doing your own idea generation, you need help because there's too much information. The check and power gauge, which we're going to get to in a couple of minutes, are fundamental multi-factor model, cuts through the clutter, and our solution to information overload is Chaken Analytics for both iPad and desktop. The centerpiece of Chaken Analytics is the Chaken Power Gauge Rating. It enables you to process fundamental data without doing the heavy lifting because the Power Gauge does it for you. Now, we've been blessed in the eight years that to the day that my wife and I started Chaken Analytics. We're now 26 people in Philadelphia dedicated to your success. And we've got nice publicity. Some of our old institutional clients like Soros Hedge Fund and have come back and started subscribing as long as Fidelity. And we've been blessed with partners like Big Trend who really believe in what we're doing at Chaken, written up in Barron's and Forbes, been on CNBC and the reason I cite all this is because it's validation of what we've been doing for eight years in power gauge rating, along with two technical indicators really work. So let's talk about what you need as a trader to make money. And this is where I'm going to draw upon what I learned at running the options department at Tucker Anthony for five years. 95% of options traders lose money. The reason is they don't understand the port, the importance of what I call the directional edge. To make money in options, you need to have some way of determining which stocks are going to go up and which stocks are going to go down. Now, for us, it's the Chaken Power Gauge rating combined with relative strength, and that is what we call the directional edge. It's what you need to trade profitably, and we do that by combining fundamentals with technicals into a quantitative model, and then providing buy and sell signals that have been proven and tested 
four and a half years of real-time performance and back tested for 20 years before that to give you better exits and entries. All of the discipline that you a successful trader or investor is summed up in this pyramid. The top of the pyramid are power gauge rating and then industry group strength. Very important to know, as I said earlier, which industry groups and sectors are likely to outperform and which ones are weak and likely to underperform. At the bottom of the pyramid, those two technical indicators, Shaken money flow and shaken relative strength. Now, many of you know shaken money flow through your online brokerage platforms. If you're an advisor, and I know we've got a, a number of financial advisors on the webinar, it's on Reuters and Bloomberg. It's been around for, whoops, 35 years since 1982, and it's been helping people make money. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to share with you one of the secrets that we've been teaching institutional traders and investors for 35 years that'll help you identify very critical sell points on individual stocks. And right in the middle, those buy and sell signals, which you desperately need if you're going to trade options successfully. So I'd like to start out by pointing you to two patterns that we think are critical in terms of finding winning stocks. The bullish pattern we call classic shake and bulls. It involves the power gauge rating first and foremost. Our fundamental indicator needs to be bullish, telling you a stock's likely to outperform the market. And we love stocks that are outperforming the market because that's validation of your fundamental opinion. And then we want shake and money flow to be strong, indicating that institutions are accumulating the stock. So here's our poster child for a classic shake and bull. We've been using this now in webinars for over six months because the power gauge rating, which is at the bottom of the chart, one year chart, has been green or bullish for almost 15 months. It's now turned neutral, but the stock still made a high. And right above that is our version of relative strength. And since it's green, it means that Applied materials, semiconductor equipment manufacturer has been outperforming the market and they're right above that shake and money flow. Now to complete the picture, because everything you need to know to trade options or swing trades successfully is right on this chart. We have one of our six buy signals, relative strength buy. And then we code the earnings to tell you whether a company has beat Wall Street estimates or disappointed. And this is really critical during earnings season. So why is this a classic shake and bull? Because the power gauge rating is bullish. The market agrees with the model. So it's outperforming and shake and money flow shows you that institutions have been buying the stock. You click on that options button and you'll get an options trade. Three ideas from options play. If you're bullish on AMAT, obviously with the stock at the upper band, I'm not, maybe it's not so obvious. So I apologize. Stock at the upper band, even though everything's bullish, I'm not putting on a bullish strategy. Where I want to put it on is when these relative strength buy signals trigger. Now, what is a relative strength buy signal? It's so simple, but so powerful. Stock is outperforming the market, dips under its 21-day average, and then goes back above it. That triggers a relative strength buy signal. And the reason I like these is that they tend to last four to eight weeks and with 70% accuracy. Every one of the five signals on this chart was a beautiful entry point for either a swing trade or an options position. All six pairs of buy and sell signals are described on our website. So whether you're a visitor or a subscriber, we tell you the underlying uh, precepts of these signals they're all filtered. Four of them are filtered by the power gauge. So you can't get a buy signal on a stock with a bearish power gauge rating. Two of them are filtered by relative strength. That's another way we give you that directional edge. Now, the opposite of this to find bearish stocks is what we call classic shake and bears. The power gauge rating is bearish. Stock is underperforming the market and shaken money flow is red, not green, telling you that institutions are selling the stock. So here's our poster child for the last nine months. Under Armour. In the apparel sector, 
loved by the hedge funds. A lot of people were enamored with the brand, but what are they doing? They're paying big money to people like Steph Curry for shoe, uh, sneaker shoe contracts, endorsements. But yet the power gauge rating has been bearish. This is a fallen angel. These are the kinds of stocks that really hurt your portfolio if you put your feet in cement and don't see that something has changed. So Under Armour, bottom of the one year chart, power gauge has been bearish for a year. Actually it goes back 16 months. Market agrees with the model. What does that mean? It's been underperforming. No matter how good your fundamental research is, if the market doesn't agree with you, at best it's dead money and at worst you're in trouble. And then institutions have been selling and how do we know that? Chicken money flow, which normally fluctuates around the zero line, was bearish for six months, meaning that institutions were selling and yet again for the last three months they've been selling. So in spite of the fact that the people on CNBC have been telling you, well, maybe it's time to step into Under Armour, a couple of brokerage firms have put out buy recommendations. These relative strength sell signals have been very, very effective at getting you in to put positions or encouraging you to exit if you've been stubborn about holding on to a stock, which may bottom out someday, but no indication of it yet. Gap down with negative earnings surprises here and here, and then again here. These patterns repeat over and over again, as we'll see when we look at the power gauge. So it's to know that there are very, very strong patterns out there behind them. So in Chaken Analytics, we have a screener. And just before this webinar, I screened for the classic bulls. So I started with the Russell 3000, required that the power gauge rating be very bullish. And then I went to our two technical factors, strong money flow over the last month, outperforming the market. And I just wanted to look at large and mid cap stocks. And I filtered a 3000 stock universe down to 29 names. I've circled two of them, Aerojet Rocket, AJRD, small cap aerospace stock, which we'll look at later. And then Barnes Group, 6850. And why did I circle Barnes? Because my partner, Carlton Neal, who joined us in January, our investment subsidiary, ran the Zweig Mutual Funds for 25 years. How many on the webinar know the name Marty Zweig and remember how successful he was at calling the crash of 87 and how well the Zweig Mutual Funds did? Type a Z into the question box if you know Marty Zweig. That'll also give me a sense of the sort of relative age of the audience. Joe, do we see any Zs in there? Or? I see at least two right now, and there's probably going to be a few more coming in in a second. Yep, and here they come. Well, Marty Swag was a friend of mine. Uh, sadly, he died too young a couple of years ago. But he combined fundamentals and technicals as well. So when Carlton Neal joined us in January, he sold off the Zweig Fund because he's a firm believer that you eat your own cooking. And he put together a diversified portfolio of about 20 stocks. And one of them was Barnes. The stock was trading at about 46, still in the portfolio nine months later, and look where the stock is trading up at 68, 69. So I just point that out to show you that the disciplined approach, and again, relative strength buy signals, four to, four to eight weeks of time duration. What a wonderful entry point. Can you see those things? So this is all about the check and power gauge rating. The gauge is simple. Under the hood, there's a lot of number crunching going on, and the power gauge rating can be your GPS during earnings season, as you'll see at the end of the webinar. It varies from very bearish to very bullish. And please don't confuse simple with simplistic. We made the display simple so everybody could understand it, but under the cover, we're crunching a lot of numbers. And we got this wonderful um, testimonial endorsement from Price. So. What did Price say? Thanks for sharing so much. Your clean and simple red-green power gauge ratings, which find stocks with the best fundamentals, makes trading easier. By pointing traders to the leaders to find stocks, you can go back to over and over again and buy the dips. That's what we were just looking at in Barnes. 
it's really a complete package and I like that it combines fundamentals and technicals for stock selection and gives timing signals as well. So price has really summed it all up there and price, thank you for that. Uh, these are the kinds of endorsements that have helped uh, give traders the confidence to use this uh, discipline and therefore make more money. So what is the check and power gauge rating? Well, it's four primary factors that look at value, growth, technicals, and sentiment. And within each of those four factors, 20 sub-factors. Now, the key is that these factors reflect everything I learned from the mentors that I've had along the way. As I mentioned in the beginning, some of them were colleagues and some were clients. 35% of the model value factors, price to sales and free cash flow to market cap are the two biggest weights in the model. If that sounds like Warren Buffett or Seth Klarman, or even going back to Graham and Dodd, it should because that's what they basically were talking about. That's what Warren Buffett preaches. Don't, too pay, don't pay too much for dollar revenue. Focus on companies that have free cash flow and you're gonna find the best stocks. And then we also look at earnings surprise because earnings surprises lead analysts to raise or lower their estimates. And that's the single biggest short-term driver stock price. Learn about earnings surprises. When I worked at Jekyll Berm in the mid eighties, George Douglas, gave me access to his quantitative database, and he did the original research in earnings surprise. And what George taught me is that earnings surprises come in bunches. There's never just one of them. We're gonna see examples of that when we look at how Chaikin can help you during earnings season. And he also said that they lead analysts to raise or lower their estimates. So George was way ahead of his time, and he's still running quant money today, $6 billion, except he made a good lifestyle decision to move from New York City to Santa Monica, California. So he's overlooking the Pacific as we speak. And then I've boxed industry group relative strength. A, you rarely see that in a quantitative model. This is what's known as a multi-factor model. It's all the rage. A lot of ETFs based on multi-factor models are in the marketplace, including one that we launched um, with a company called Index IQ that's part of the largest mutual insurance company in America, New York Life Insurance, and we'll talk briefly about that later. Power gauge rating has worked, and here's the performance. 2016, using the Russell 3000 as a universe, the average very bullish stock in the Russell up 32%, the average very bearish stock up 9.5%. Would you rather be in a stock that's up on average, 9.5% in a given year or a stock that's up 32%? I think the answer is self-evident, but in 2015, it was even more dramatic. The average very bare stock in the Russell 3000 in the Chaikin Power Gauge model down 17%. These were the energy stocks like Range Resources, Kinder Morgan, the fracking stocks, the rails, Small caps in general were bearish. You needed to avoid those stocks in 2015 to stay whole or trade them from the short side. And then one final piece of validation, we've partnered with NASDAQ and New York Life with NASDAQ. We created three indexes in April of 2014, large cap, small cap, and dividend achiever. The goal was to establish a three-year track record that proved if we were successful, that a disciplined methodology can create a portfolio from a master universe that can outperform the market. And these are buy and hold portfolios, 12 months. We've been successful in three years. Track record shows that the NASDAQ Chaikin indices have significantly outperformed their benchmarks and therefore New York Life Insurance and their Index IQ ETF subsidiary licensed these in February. And in May, they rolled out the first exchange traded fund, the IQ Chicken small cap ETF, not encouraging you to buy it. It's not a recommendation, 
just validation, and it's garnered over $200 million in assets in just three and a half months. It's the most successful ETF launch in the smart beta or multi-factor space in 2017, and that includes funds from Goldman Sachs and BlackRock. So we're really up there competing with the big guys and we're doing a good job of it and the fund's performing beautifully. Again, not a recommendation to buy it, validation of the power gauge rating and that discipline methodology that we preach. So two concepts that embed or embody everything we're talking about. First one is the dynamic duo, which basically combines fundamentals and technicals. Chicken power gauge rating is the fundamental indicator, and our relative strength is the technical indicator. The dynamic duo finds big winners and losers. Therefore, you're going to identify stocks that are going to significantly outperform the market on a going forward basis. But relative strength stands alone as it always has as a bullish or bearish indicator. What is this called? It's called momentum investing works on the upside and the downside. But if you're trading a stock on the long side or you own it that doesn't have the fundamental support but is a strong momentum stock like Tesla or Amazon, you're on a high wire without a safety net. When something goes wrong, and we're going to show you our recent recommendations, and two of them are stocks where something is not going well right now, you're on a high wire without a safety net, and it's very painful when you fall off the high wire. So second concept is called spotting personality changes. I think this is the real key to outperforming the market, and it's also the key to keeping your profits intact. The reason is we tend to put our feet in cement. I've done it at times in my life since I've Developed the Chaikin power gauge rating, many, many fewer instances of trying to fight the market. In fact, they don't fight the market. I let the market tell me what to do. So here's an example of a stock that had a bullish personality change. Gilead is one of the great biotech stocks. They've got a drug that cures hepatitis C at a, at a pretty high price. And it had a bullish personality change back in late July. It went from underperforming the market. And how do we know that? Because Chaikin relative strength was red. And then it turned to green, meaning that Gilead broke that downtrend, even though the power gauge rating at times had been bullish and established an uptrend. Now, the combination of power gauge bullish and the personality change is what we call the dynamic duo. So when you get a personality change, you want to look for a buy signal as a low risk entry point. You got one right here. This is our oversold buy signal. Came at about 72 and then the stock spiked up to 86 when there was a favorable announcement about one of their new drugs. So what is an oversold buy signal? Again, very simple. The stock has a bullish power gauge rating, so you've got that directional edge of the fundamentals. It makes a new eight-day low and gets oversold. Really simple. Now, these signals tend to have a shorter time horizon, five to 10 days. They're perfect for options, short-term options trading and swing trading entry points, and they were 66% of the time. And this is an example of a bullish personality change, which came after a long downtrend in the stock. Now, here's an example of a bearish personality change. This is a drug stock. Tessero had been outperforming the market, but notice the power gauge at the bottom was neutral. So this was a momentum stock doing extremely well on this chart. It went from 92 all the way to 182. And then it broke down and you got a bearish personality change in late March, institutional selling, and it hasn't been able to get above our long-term trend line since then. And you've had some overbought sell signals to generate some put entry points. 
negative earnings surprises. It's the package that we're talking about. Now, back in 2015, 2016, the power gauge rating also turned bearish on a stock that had been a high momentum stock called Sun Edison. Sorry about that. It's my over hyperactive mouse on the Mac. Sun Edison was the darling of the institutional community. Hedge funds loved it. Brokerage firms liked it. Merrill Lynch had a buy recommendation on it at 28. In the 2830 area, the power gauge turned bearish in July of 2015. This chart ends in April of 16. You'll see why in a minute. Institutions were already selling the stock. How do we know that? Shake and money flow was red, not green. Remember, three only indicators, the fundamental power gauge, relative strength, and money flow, and then the signals to help get you into the trades. So it broke down. You got a bearish personality change, dynamic duo on the downside, everything in gear. And then you had some sell signals. But the key is that you are out of the stock here at the 25 level. And the reason this chart ends in April of 16 is that the company filed for bankruptcy, which we captured in a wonderful screenshot on CNBC with Jim Cramer. Merrill Lynch did put out a sell recommendation on the stock. It came at $3 in February of 2016 after they had recommended it at 28. Now we're not singling out Merrill Lynch this happens on every Wall Street firm occasionally. But the key is you can't rely on brokerage firm research. You gotta do your own work and have independent tools to evaluate any research that you're looking at. So we got this wonderful testimonial from a Merrill Lynch advisor who saw us at a trade show in May of 16. He basically said, if I had only had Chaikin I wouldn't have averaged down on Sun Edison for myself and my clients at 15. Merrill Lynch was still recommending the stock. If I'd been using Chaik and I could have saved a lot of pain and money. This is why you need objective independent tools that have proven themselves. And here's proof, this is living proof. We were using this on webinars back in 2015 and 16 as the poster child for our classic bear. Now, I promised you to share a secret sell signal that we've been teaching traders, institutional traders for 35 years. We call it the shaken bearish money flow sell alert. 95% of traders don't even know what this means. But you can find this not just in shaken analytics, but on stockcharts.com, your online brokerage technical package. And here it is. If a stock makes a new high and shake and money flow doesn't go green, that's a tip off that institutions are selling into strength. So recognize this pattern. It recurs often enough that when you spot it, you can very often sell a stock right at its high with the confidence that you're not leaving money on the table although that's not the worst thing in the world. I've got a saying, you know, that sometimes you just got to take your profit, not worry about whether a stock's going to move higher and let someone else make a little money. In this case, a bearish money flow sell alert very often gets you out right at the top. Now, if you're not willing to go short at that point, but you've gotten out of advanced auto parts at 170, when you get the bearish personality change and the power gauge at the bottom of the chart turning red or bearish and institutions are selling, you really need to get out of the stock. And if you put your feet in cement, don't recognize the power gauge and the, more importantly, relative strength flipping over, that's when you lose big money. That's when you stay with stocks that are going to blow up your portfolio. Now, we actually made this one of our bearish stocks of the week, and we got a sell signal, an overbought sell signal right before earnings were reported in May, and the stock gapped down from 145 all the way to 135 and continued down to 100 before it found support. And then you had another opportunity with a relative strength sell signal to sell it ahead of the next earnings report 
at around 110 and it gapped down to 80. This is what a discipline methodology can do for you as a trader. Now, the flip side of that is stocks that are under heavy accumulation. And we're looking at a company called Blucora in the computer software and services group. And remember that group because we're going to look at it in a minute. Stocks that are under accumulation see money flow stay green or above the zero line, even when they're pulling back and getting oversold on a short-term basis. So we see two instances here, one where Blue Core went sideways for eight weeks and another where it pulled back from the upper volatility band, but money flow stayed positive. Institutions were buying the dips and you should be buying it as well. Bullish power gauge rating, outperforming the market, persistent accumulation, another chance to buy in here. This happens to be one of the 233 stocks that are in the, our small cap ETF, CSML, the IQ Chaken small cap. It's a classic Chaken bull in the small cap space, and it's been a wonderful trading vehicle. Now let's sum this all up. What we've been talking about is what Warren Buffett calls the ideal setup. He's famously said, they don't call balls and strikes on Wall Street, so you don't have to swing at every pitch. You can wait for your pitch. He calls it the fat pitch. We call it the ideal setup. The missing piece are check and buy and sell signals. Six pairs of buy and sell signals. We've shown you two of them. And here again, it's great that there are sell signals, but if you don't know that they've kicked in or triggered, then you can't take advantage of them and pull the trigger. So we have a dashboard in Chaken Analytics. This is from our iPad app. We also have it on the desktop. And for a webinar that I did on October, on August 10th, rather, I took a screenshot of the alerts window from a list of stocks that I monitor, about 170 stocks, way too many for the average trader, but because I do the webinars and write a weekly market letter, I want a rich group of stocks to find ideas from. So bullish and bearish signals on August 10th. The bullish signal, a momentum breakout of Michael Coors. The bearish signal that I highlighted is in Bed Bath & Beyond, and we'll get to that later. It was a relative strength signal. So let's see what happened to my cores. There was, wow, sorry about that. There was your momentum breakout on August 10th. The company had reported a positive earnings surprise. You got a bullish personality change. The power gauge was already bullish. When you get a big spike up, gap up, especially after an earnings report, you normally consolidate for five to eight trading sessions. Sometimes it's purely sideways and sometimes you pull back enough that you trigger an oversold buy signal on a new eight day low, which is what happened to Michael Kors about eight days after that signal that we just saw. And the stock went from 41 to 46.75. So really nice trade, still trading up around 46, but now it's again, above the volatility bands, so you want to be a little careful. But the key here is that this signal was based on a discipline using proven analytics, and that's always better than trading on your emotions. And we're going to look at Bed Bath & Beyond when we look at the earnings season picture at the end of the webinar. So now let's segue to how you use sectors and groups to find big winners. We enable you to look at the 10 select spider sector ETFs in the S&P. Many of you trade those ETFs. We look at them through the lens of our power bar ratings and we'll show you what they are. Then we drill down on the strong and weak sectors to find the best stocks to trade from the long side or the short side. Because if you're long stocks in strong sectors and strong industry groups, You've got a tailwind. William O'Neill, Investors Business Daily, Zach, Standard & Poor's have all written white papers documenting how important it is to trade the long side in strong sectors and groups and how difficult it is to make money on the long side in weak sectors and groups. But flip that on its head and now you've got the opportunity 
to find great short candidates. So here's how we look at the 10 sectors in the P500. We don't look at price, we look at it later, but we rank them by the number of stocks with bullish versus bearish power gauge ratings. So financials, healthcare, technology, industrials, materials, utilities, all with bullish power bars, more bullish than bearish stocks. And at the bottom, energy with no bullish power gauge rated stocks. And it's been that way since late January. So let's zero in on technology and look at a healthcare stock or two. We've already seen Gilead. Here's the XLK, the Select Spider Sector Technology ETF. Notice that it's been outperforming the market for almost 12 months with a little period after the election where everybody went to financials and industrial stocks and they took profits in technology. But outperforming the market, strong shaken money flow in the ETF. So you want to buy the oversolds either in the XLK itself, it's a way to make a quick bet on technology, but better yet, Find stocks like LAM Research or AMAT, our classic shake and bull, the best of the best in the technology sector. And here again, this is Warren Buffett's fat pitch, our, our ideal setup. Power gauge rating is bullish, outperforming the market. Shake and money flow is telling you institutions are accumulating the stock. 18 quarters in a row of positive earnings surprises. That's why earnings surprise is part of our power gauge rating. And here we see some relative strength buy signals. You got one early in the move at 100 on the way to 175. And then you got two more here when you pull back from the uh, April peak or rather the uh, May, June peak. And both of them have proven out and the stock made new all time highs just three days ago. So that's the sector picture. Now let's look at industry groups. On the left, very bullish industry groups ranked by the power bar. Aerospace defense, we're gonna look at very dramatic example, 24 bullish stocks and one bearish. And computer and software and services, I mentioned Blue Cora is in that group, that lovely small cap name that's in our ETF. And then on the right, the weak stocks based on the power bars, and it's dominated by energy and consumer staples, and it's been that way for six months. So these sector and group trends persist for extended periods of time. So let's look at two aerospace stocks. And we feature these in our weekly market letter called Market Insights. I pick three strong and weak industry groups based on the power bar, and then feature three those groups. One of the stocks that we featured off and on for the last four months is a company called Orbital, aerospace defense stock, bullish power gauge rating at a personality change in, May, in November of 16. And the stock's been on a steady climb since then from about 88 to 110 with bullish power gauge rating and positive relative strength. And then about six days ago, Northrop Grumman made a bid for the stock and it jumped up from 107 all the way to 132. Now, one of the stocks that we highlighted in our screen for classic bulls was Aerojet Rocket Dynamics, AJRD, small cap stock in the aerospace defense group. As soon as the bid for Orbital was announced, a lot of these aerospace stocks spiked up in sympathy, expecting that there might be more merger and acquisition activity. But before that, we had had an overbought, uh, oversold buy signal. New eight day low and a stock with a bullish power gauge rating, positive money flow. That came at about 28. Stock was trading at 32.39 today, earlier up 2% with the market flat to down. This is what a disciplined approach using the signals can provide. Nice swing trading opportunity. Due to report earnings in November, analysts are raising their estimates, but this M&A activity gave you a winning trade. And again, sector and group strength points you in the right direction. So let's look at how you play good defense and look at a weak sector. 
because we all get the question, Chaikin's been great in a bull market, but what's it going to do for me in a bear market? Well, the bull market began in March of 09. It's now eight and a half years in, and a lot of people are turning bearish just because of the duration and using as a reason. Well, during or length of a bull market doesn't predict the demise. We showed you earlier what does. It's a recession, and the recession indicators haven't triggered. You have a series of opportunities to put on put positions. Someone like Price is wonderful at finding you these trades. We do it with our signals. So let's look at what was it really a bear market in the middle of this bull market, which is the energy complex starting in 2014 through February of 2016. So an 18-month bear market in energies. The XLE, the Select Spider Sector Large Cap Energy ETF, dropped a, dropped 50% from 100 all the way down to 50 from its peak in July of 2014 through the trough. And when we got that bearish personality change in September of 2015, 14, we started for energy stocks to short. We found things like Resources and Pioneer, one energy sets have levitated and hung up there. It was getting more as it had 20% yield. The stock hung up until May of 2015, but when the power gauge was bearish and we got a bearish purge and the institution started selling it, we started using this as our poster child for the classic bacon bear. And this chart is. 2015 into 2016. And you can see that when the XLE was dropping 50%, Kinder Morgan actually dropped 80% from 42 all the way down to $10. And you had sell signals along the way, overbought sell signals to help you establish put positions. And the takeaway from this chart is really important. It's never too late to sell a stock where everything is lined up against you because you don't know what the bottom is going to look like. After the technology bubble, the internet bubble burst in 2000, there was no bottom for a number of stocks, hundreds of stocks that went bankrupt. Same happened after the financial collapse of 08. So there's no guarantee that an Under Armour or a Sun Edison is going to stay in business. You hope that Under Armour will, and I, I'm sure they will. But some stocks with no fundamentals, no earnings, like Sun Edison go out of business. So if you get an opportunity to sell based on a discipline methodology, take advantage of it. Now, here's the XLE in real time. And yet again, in January of this year, 2017, in spite of the fact that crude oil prices were moving back up again, you got a bearish personality change in the XLE in late January which told me that it was a sector to avoid. There were no bullish stocks based on the power gauge rating, and there still aren't in large cap energy. And it dropped 15% while the bull market was making new all-time highs. Now, you've had a good, solid spike up in energy stocks here in the last four weeks. The, the energy is still underperforming the market, but at least you have the first signs of spring, the crocuses are coming up in the energy complex. But there is yet not one large cap energy and almost no small cap energy stocks with bullish power gauge ratings. So I'm going to wait for the power gauge ratings to turn bullish and the relative strength to turn bullish before I start bottom fishing in energy. And here's an example of what we started looking for in late January. In, in April, we got a great opportunity to buy put options when we recommended Schlumberger as a bearish energy stock ahead of that earnings report. And the stock moved up into the earnings report, and then started coming down. We triggered an overbought sell signal, and the stock spiked down from 76, ultimately finding a bottom around 64 and then continued lower, but all the while, power gauge was bearish, relative strength was weak, and institutions were doing what? 
they were selling the stock. So just three things to look at plus the signals. It doesn't have to be complicated. I promised you we talk about options and earnings season. Earnings season happens four times a year, January, April, July, and now coming up October, when companies report their quarterly earnings. And a lot of traders are nervous about trading during earnings season because there's an awful lot of volatility. And you shouldn't be nervous unless you have something like the power gauge rating as your GPS because there's real opportunity in earnings season if you know with a high degree of reliability whether a stock is likely to meet, beat, or disappoint Wall Street estimates. Because then you can find winning options trades and make serious money very quickly a bullish power gauge rating tells you the stock is twice as likely to report a positive earnings surprise. And a bearish power gauge rating, as we'll see, shows you that a stock is more likely to report a negative earnings surprise. And in the July earnings season, when companies reported their second quarter earnings, even though second quarter earnings were good, if you disappointed, you were punished. There was unrelenting selling in stocks that missed analyst estimates. So here are some examples. In April of this year, in my weekly market insights, I identified a weak industry group. We've looked at how industry groups can put the wind at your back. Auto parts stocks made three of them my bearer stock of the week on April 9th, said to sell them on strength. Advanced Auto Parts, AutoZone, and O'Reilly the reason I said sell them on strength of 2 to 4% was that they had been making new 52-week lows, and I do not like to buy bearish positions on stocks that are at new 52-week lows. I want to give myself a little edge, wait for a rally. They did rally. Here's an example of that. And Advanced Auto Parts rallied right ahead of an earnings report to 150. Whoops, sorry about that. And then we got a sell signal overbought sell and the stock reported a bearish earnings surprise and dropped from what was then 130 to 100. But you could have been short the stock through a vertical put spread or an outright put purchase at 150 based on that sell signal. Now, this is what O'Reilly did. It also rallied up at two to 4% that we were looking for, gave a relative strength sell signal Ahead of that earnings report, the stock dropped from 260 in steps all the way down to 210. And you had three opportunities to put on put positions as the stock periodically rallied with some short covering. And then in June, the game was over because the company said year over year sales are down. And the stores that have been in existence for a year, and that's the kiss of death. And from 215 to 170, you could have been shorting the stock at 260 if you followed the discipline. Now, advanced auto parts to that initial move to 100 gave you a second chance, and they reported another negative earnings surprise. Remember, I said when I was talking about earnings surprise in the power gauge, they come in bunches. So back here in August, if you followed the methodology, you could have been buying puts at around 110. And when they reported a negative earnings surprise, they gapped down yet again. And this time they bottomed out around 80. So from 110 to 80 is a really wonderful put trade. And just recently, we got another overbought sell signal. The next earnings report is in November. Could be a fourth earnings surprise in a row. If there is, there'll be another opportunity. We see that bear personality change. These patterns repeat over and over and over again. So again, in the energy sector, Helmerich and Payne, similar business to Schlumberger, oil drilling and services. You got that initial opportunity in April. Remember the group turned bearish in late January. Sell signal ahead of an earnings report. The stock dropped from 65 all the way to 47, that's a, almost a 28% drop. And then it rallied for about two or three months. 
and gave you a sell signal right ahead of the earnings report. And the stock dropped again, this time from 55 to 44, so another 20% drop in the stock. There are opportunities during earnings season that repeat over and over again. And even the strong tech sector, a stock like Seagate, which had a bearish personality change in April with a bearish power gauge rating, gave you a overbought sell signal when one day before they reported a negative earnings surprise when the stock dropped 28%. And with LAM Research and AMAT making new highs, Seagate has been making new 52-week lows. So within the same industry group, you can find bullish and bearish stocks. This was a wonderful trade that we identified ahead of that earnings report. And I promised you we'd look at Bed Bath & Beyond again. Here's a stock where the power gauge just turned bearish a month ago. It had been underperforming the market and look at the institutional selling in this stock. Bricks and mortar retailers being marginalized by Amazon. Bearish earnings surprise back here in June, spiked down. And yet again, just three days ago, two days ago actually, with a sell signal proceeding at a money flow sell, Bed Bath and, Rep and Beyond reported a negative earnings surprise. They disappointed Wall Street. The stock was down 17% yesterday and another one, one and a half percent today. These are the opportunities that you can find. And these are what I call low risk, high reward opportunities. If you buy a put option or put on a vertical put spread, which is a bearish position, you know what your risk is. It's very limited. But the returns can be enormous if a stock drops 18, 20, or 30%, as we've seen with these examples. We got this testimonial from a subscriber who said 10x return in five days. Been using Chaken Analytics. I've paid for the subscription over tenfold because I've followed your recommendations. These results are nothing short of outstanding and big thanks to your team. And I mentioned earlier, 26 people in Philadelphia dedicated to your best. So let's look at a few recent recommendations in my weekly market insights. August 20th, short sale on Amazon. It was trading around 960. I said shorted on a rally to 990 to 1000. You'll see why in a minute. That's just one recommendation a week. September 3rd, buy Kohl's. We're starting to see some of the retailers, the bricks and mortar retailers turning around, $40.10. And then 910 Short Allergan, which is a drug company with a very hot drug at $233.55. Let's see how they worked out. Amazon rallied up to the 1,000 level, it actually ticked at 1,002 pennies didn't violate our long-term trend line. In fact, when it broke the trend line, that's when I got bearish on the stock, when it broke it on the downside here and it had the bearish power gauge rating. And it's now dropped from 1,000 to 968 and uh, probably headed back down to this lower band, which is in the 930 area and maybe lower. Now, Jim Cramer, who has always followed Chaik and Money Flow, but is now starting to look at the Chaik and Power Gauge, and by the way, I'm doing a live event in New York City on August 20, on October 28th, sponsored by Jim Cramer. John Najarian will be speaking. I'm fortunate enough to be the featured speaker at the Harvard Club in New York. It's a paid event, and we'll be sending out a mailing. Anybody in the area who wants to join us, a lot of smart Wall Street people, smarter than I am, sharing their insights. We'll be talking about some new and unique th ways to use Chaken Analytics. But Jim Cramer, two days after we put out this sell recommendation, did a 12-minute segment to lead off Mad Money. Bearish on Amazon gave us credit for the idea. And I think the game may be over in Amazon. If I'm wrong, you used 1,000 or that long-term trend line at about 1,010 as your stop out. But some very profitable options trades were put on by people who followed Chaken Analytics when the stock rallied up above 990. Kohl's, we recommended it at 4010 with that yellow arrow. Again, the power gauge rating had just turned bullish. 
institutions have been accumulating it. It was outperforming the market. It's gone from 40 all the way to 47, pulled back a bit, love to get a buy signal. But 17% move in coals in just two weeks in a market that's not been kind to retail. And then Allergan which had rallied up to 233 when we put out the sell recommendation in just two weeks, less than two weeks, down to 203 today, a 30 point drop in the stock. Power gauge has been bearish. It had been underperforming with institutional selling. My rationale was a new story about a very convoluted patent situation that caused the stock to rally from 220 up to 233. Ideal time to put on a put position. It's working out beautifully down almost 15% in just eight trading, nine trading sessions. This is the power of putting together a fundamental indicator with two technical indicators and following the signals. So I'd love the webinar by highlighting the newest innovation at Chaken Analytics called our stock discovery engine. You've seen how powerful the ideas are that we've been talking about. And we, in May, won the Benziga FinTech Award for best ideas platform. There were 20 entrants into that category. Chaken Analytics won that. It's validation, everything that the 26 people in Philadelphia have been committed to for the last four years, helping you make money. Example of the stock discovery engine at work. You seed it with a stock that you're either bullish or bearish on, and it gives you back ideas. And in July, I had put out a sell recommendation on Starbucks ahead of the earnings. The stock dropped dramatically. But I seeded the discovery engine on July 23rd for a webinar that I did. And the first stock that was an exact match to Starbucks was Chipotle. So we have an engine that works like Spotify or Netflix to find you music or movies. This finds you stocks that are similar to stocks that you're either bullish or bearish on. Also recommends potential swaps. So Chipotle was 395.83 had a very bearish rating and look what happened to it. The arrow is where we identified it on the webinar as a sell candidate and the stock dropped from 398 all the way down to 298. Money flows bearish, had the bearish personality change, but look what preceded it. Remember I told you that that secret pattern Call the bearish money flow sell alert triggers often enough that you want to be looking for it. Well, here it was in Chipotle. The stock made a new high, equaled its old high. Money flow stayed in the red. That told you institutions were using the strength to sell the stock. And look what happened. You got a momentum breakdown. Remember I told you when you get a momentum breakdown or a breakout, you wait for a sideways to down movement. In this case, you got sideways movement, and then using the discovery engine, we highlighted it on a webinar as a stock that could be sold. And good things happen when you follow the discipline. So now you know the five keys to profitable options in swing trading, and how do you take advantage of them? Well, Chain Analytics is a proven stock selection system. Got that wonderful testimony from Price earlier on the chicken package. It includes the factor model that combines fundamentals and technicals, which underlies this new ETF that's garnered 200 million in assets in just three and a half months. It includes the stock discovery engine to find new ideas. And it also includes our screener, our options play module. You've seen that. And chicken analytics normally List price $1,950 a year for an annual subscription. You can go to chickenanalytics.com backslash checklist to sign up and subscribe. But as a webinar special for Price Heedley and the Big Trends community, like to reduce the price $300 to $1,650. And this offer expires Sunday night. 
September 24th. Go to chickenanalytics.com slash checklist or email sales at chickenanalytics.com or call the number on your screen. But Joe Bacella is going to put a link into the uh, Q&A chat box so you, you can click on it and immediately get that discount. Now, in addition, you get our intraday charts, our earnings alerts, and my weekly market insights. And we've highlighted some of the recommendations. Every recommendation that we've highlighted came from market insights. Plus, you get small group tutorial to help you set up your system and know all features, take an unlimited coaching and support. And if you need it, one-on-one -on -one coaching, plus my colleague, John Schlitz's daily morning insights so you don't have to stay glued to CNBC for an hour to know what's going on. O'Neill pretty much sums it up. From 235,000 to a million, NH said July 30th, I've been trading stock options for many years with not much success. On January 4th, your system start of the year with 205,000. As of today, my net liquidation value on my account, a million two. I've not been able to do that without our system. That's as dramatic a testimonial as we've ever gotten. So, as one added incentive for you to take advantage of the power of Chicken Analytics, I'd like to give you a fast action bonus. If you subscribe, by midnight tonight, I know many of you will. Not only you get the three hundred dollar discount, but you get a one one phone conversation with me, and that applies to the first ten people who subscribe. This offer expires at midnight tonight. Shakenanalytics.com slash checklist. And with that, I'd like price bring Analytics giving us opportunity to present to your community once again. If you're still with us and you want to wrap it up with some comments, I'd be thrilled to hear them. Oh, well, thank you, Mark. It's always eye opening to see what you're calling out. Uh, and you see, folks, how Mark's been sharing with you what he's been calling out just recently. So we're not just talking about a bunch of old examples, we're talking about fresh examples. What I love about what Mark showed today is that he shows you that there's a bull market and a bear market in a lot of different stocks and sectors all the time. And so you can see that while we've had a generally bullish environment for stocks, Mark was showing you countless opportunities. You could have made a lot of money on the downside as well. And as we know, uh, stocks take the escalator on the way up, but as they say, they take the elevator on the way down. So some of those gains for option traders on those put trades you can catch into and after earnings are, are phenomenal. Great call on Amazon, uh, Mark, right up there at 1,000 at the resistance and a beautiful move back down there. And, and many other great examples that Mark showed you using the power gauge, using the tools that you're now getting the ability to access. We're talking about institutional level uh, really serious tools that you can put at your disposal that you just can't find anywhere else at frankly an unbelievably great entry point for you. Mark, thank you for taking that down several hundred dollars for our Big Trends community and the extra bonus. I mean, how many times could you get uh, on top of a uh, great value on access to all of the Chicken Analytics platform here? Could you get a one-on-one -on -one call with the guy himself, a 50-year market veteran, Mark Chaikin. I mean, I was studying uh, Mark Chaikin's work when I got started in trading uh, back in 1990. I mean, so it's one of those great opportunities you get to really engage and really pick Mark's brain as well as for him to give you some insights that can help your trading and investing going forward. So uh, don't miss this opportunity. That's a fast action bonus just for the first 10 to get the one-on-one -on -one coaching session with Mark. That expires tonight at midnight. So that's the, uh, as he called it, the fast action bonus. That's a phenomenal, uh, uh, tremendous value offered on top of the excellent value of the access to the Chicken Analytics uh, platform here and all the other bonuses that he shared with you. So thank you again, Mark. Tremendous, uh, uh, you know, data driven uh, presentation. You know, here you're getting folks to, to really a, a, an inside look at the power 
of uh, the power gauge and the power of helping out on any stock, any sector, any market you want to look at and trade, whether it's for short term or more intermediate to longer term, you can see the power gauge does a great job keeping you on board the big trends. That's what I always care about is that it's about, as, Mike, as, as Mark said at the beginning of the presentation, direction. You know, direction matters so much for option traders. Don't miss that, that you've got to be on the right side of that. Timing is not the only thing. It's really everything, especially when it comes to option success. That's why, as Mark shared with you, most people miss the opportunity on options. Here you can get on the right side of the trend, uh, whether it's going up or down with the power gauge and all the check and analytics tools. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Mark. Fantastic stuff. And folks, don't miss this opportunity for the great uh, savings in addition to the one-on-one -on -one coaching with Mark for those who act quickly today. So thanks so much, Mark, and I hope to see you again very, very soon. Well, thank you, Price. And speaking of timing, I think it's time that we go to our friendship with a little bit of in Lexington, Kentucky, in your neck of the woods. So Wonderful. that's high on my bucket list here. Uh, Joe, we're going to turn it back to you to wind down the webinar and uh, appreciate everything with us. Awesome. All right, everyone. Well, gentlemen, thanks so much for your time. Uh, just as a reminder for our presentation, uh, for Mark's offer here, we're offering sixteen fifty for a full year to Chaken Analytics, uh, and that includes a one-on-one -on -one session with Mark. Uh, I'm pretty uh, lucky. I've been able to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions with Mark, and I can't even express just how much uh, I've learned from him. Um, so take advantage of this. Make sure to join us for a complete year. That's a great discount at sixteen fifty for a full year to Chaken. Uh, we have our next uh, support webinar tomorrow at two o'clock Eastern time. That is our onboard session, which is perfect uh, for you. Um, this is a complete uh, walkthrough of the program to get you set up, understand how to create different lists, understand all the different analysis and get you set up so that you can start doing very well. So uh, we know there's a few questions we don't have time to get to, but make sure to give us a call. We're going to be sticking around later on tonight. Uh, you can reach us at 877-697-6783, or you can send us an email at sales at shakenanalytics.com. Uh, but until then, keep an eye out for the recording being sent out tomorrow. Uh, have a great evening, and uh, we will see you on tomorrow's onboard session.